Hi, Scorpio. It's Angela with Mystic Moon. Welcome to your October reading. Just take what resonates and get rid of anything that doesn't. Everything will be listed down below. Let's go ahead and get started and take a look and see what kind of trick or treat energy will be coming through for you this October. Let's take a look here. Trick or treat energy. It says you confuse your own damn self. So it could be you guys that maybe um, you're even confusing yourself. And so it's a tricky energy. It's like tricks that you play on yourself. You don't trust your intuition. Maybe you don't trust the decisions that you make. So that could be a little tricky this month. We have death when it comes to things that are ending. This death energy is yours, Scorpio, okay? So you're confusing yourself because let's just say something is trying to end in your life and maybe you're having a difficult time letting it go. Maybe you're not sure what you should do next, how to rebirth yourself, reinvent yourself, etc. So we're gonna keep going into these cards and just kind of see what that's all about. But right now your biggest tricky energy this month is how you're going to, um, you know, maybe re- like reinvent yourself or maybe even like let something go should you or shouldn't you should you start over is something over all right so let's now take a look and see what is the environment so your witch's coven what is your environment this month we have ritual so you're gonna be doing some sort of ritual i love this, this is a great month to do rituals so you could be releasing something, starting fresh, starting new. So definitely, if anything is confusing you on what you should do or you want something revealed to you, definitely create some sort of ritual about that. And we have the Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands is about forward movement. It's also about travel, should you or shouldn't you. So you might be kind of trying to figure out, should you move? Should you communicate? Should you travel? Maybe you're doing a ritual for communication. Is something over? Should I leave it in the past? There's a lot of energy surrounding this kind of need to understand something. So when it comes to someone in your environment, I'm getting here that you want to either travel or move forward or communicate. Yeah, the Hermit. The hermit could be connected to the sign of Virgo, but it's kind of like, should I, or shouldn't I, the hermit is like pulling back. The eight of wands is moving forward with something. So just depends on what that is for you, you guys, but I feel like you're going to do some sort of ritual that's going to help you to either make a decision or to reveal to you what your next move should be. I'm also getting here, like bringing something that's been in hiding or in hermit mode for a while. And we're bringing forth some sort of activity on this situation. And it's almost like something from the past. Like you're very confused about something that's over. And so you want to kind of know, does someone still care? Does someone, is there still hope for something or should I, or should I not do this or do that? So in your community, it could be that you're, you're, um, having someone do a ritual for you or a spell or a, a reading. Um, and it's going to help you to make a decision with some kind of situation that's confusing you. That's very interesting. All right, then let's take a look at the vampire energy, which is what are you currently feeding in your life or what's feeding on you? We have, oh, pumpkin, someone's madly in love. Truth is both of you are, but are too stubborn to admit it. Will you both confess or will you both continue to stay hard headed? Oh, pumpkin. Interesting. So it's like there is love in the air, right? And so you might be doing some sort of ritual or reading or having someone else assist you with this to kind of figure out, does someone care about you? Do they want to be with you? What should you do about this situation? I feel like you're addressing it this month, Scorpio. Yeah, six of swords. Do I move on or do I move towards this person? What do I do? Also, I'm getting here with the eight of wands and the six of swords. There could be a move. Do I move towards this person? Um, do I move to where they, they are living currently? Is this person going to move to where I'm at currently? You're asking this question and I feel like something is being made clear to you. Yes, yeah, eight of pentacles. So I feel like so we can work on this or so, so we can make some sort of headway in this connection. So I do feel like you guys are going to definitely figure something out this month in relation to love. And does someone care about you? Do they want to move forward? Can you work on this connection, etc. So what's feeding on you right now is this feeling of what do I do? I feel like you're no longer going to let it be a drain and you're going to get it figured out and cleared up this month. So that's great. So I feel like answers are coming to you in regards to your love life. So let's see the skeleton, which is it represents the bare bones of you, your true authentic self this month. 
Oh, angel of alchemy. Yeah, you're you. Okay, you're either going to someone that is going to be lighting a candle or doing a ritual or ceremony on behalf of this situation for you. Okay, so it's like this angel, this assistance, this person that's connected to alchemy, spells, witchcraft, something like that, or even just like doing some sort of divination or a reading, or maybe that's you. You're doing your own ceremony. You're doing your own spells this, this month. But what it's going to do is it's going to bring forth some sort of answer. And it does say miracle, but it's going to bring up about a result that's going to be helpful to you. So I'm getting here that you actually have the power to create some kind of outcome here. You can't bend someone else's free will, but I feel like you're going to be able to create an outcome. We have contentment, 10 of cups. So you do have the opportunity to create 10 of cups, whether it's by yourself, being content in your own energy or with a partner, whether this person is the person that you're thinking of right now, or whether you're opening yourself up to just the right person for you in general, whoever that might be, I feel like you're doing a spell to bring forth or ritual of some sort to bring forth some sort of love partner to you. And, um, it may come to you at a different time, but it looks to me like you're really going to be focusing on this work this month is creating new love or creating some sort of an answer or movement or working on a partnership. Yes. So who you truly are, you deserve to be happy and you are very powerful and can create your own 10 of cups for sure. So now we're going to go into the werewolf. What needs to be expressed or unleashed here for you? We have no reflection. Five of cups. Okay. Well, it's kind of like when we look in the mirror, right? We don't see anything there. Just some, somebody's not there. Five of cups is very sad very, very sad energy. So what I'm getting here is that, um, if we're letting our past, which is five of cups, we're letting our past disappointments and sadness kind of hold us back. We're not able to like really see any kind of reflection as to what is going to happen or where we're headed. I really do feel like you guys are going to be unleashing that your power this month, you're going to be unleashing, um, this magic or this like miracle where you're going to be able to start seeing something. You're going to start being able to see a little bit of the future or a glimpse of something, getting information about a, a future partner or information about this person. So something that you didn't see before, I feel like you're going to see it this month and it's just going to come out and it's going to be very, very strong. And it might have something to do with the past person. You might also be, um, taking some time to reflect on yourself, reflect on your feelings and maybe even in a ceremony or a ritual letting go. So that way you can make room for the new totally up to you guys. But there's something where we're really taking the time to, um, either reflect or we're finally seeing something that we couldn't see before because we're feeling extra magical this month. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. So now we're going to go into the Frankenstein and bride energy, which is energy surrounding partnerships. I'm compelling you to give in to me. Oh my God. I'm telling you guys, somebody's doing a spell. <laughs> some of you Scorpios are doing some kind of ritual or a spell. Okay. You're trying to compel someone. I don't want to say that this is like black magic or we're trying to like, you know, bend someone's free will, but we're trying to enchant a, an outcome here. We're trying to compel this person to perhaps reveal how they truly feel for us. So that way we know how to move forward. We know what to do. Okay, so you're, you're gaining clarity this month on this. Something is being revealed to you in the form of a partnership. Yeah, four of cups. So the four of cups is, do you want me or you don't want me? Is this for me or is it not for me? Because the four of cups means that, you know, someone's either declining or they're not able to see something. So you're, you're almost like pushing spirit to show you and to reveal to you what is meant for you or what is for you or isn't for you. So you're getting an answer in relation to your love life this month. Something will make sense. Okay. But it's going to be revealed to you, not necessarily to me. So it's all a part of the fun with you working with your energy and your magic and your divination skills. Okay. So let's go into the uh, ghost energy, which is past energy that needs to be exercised that could still be haunting us at this time. Ooh, vampire. Somebody's thirsty. 
Somebody wants something, okay? All right. Hanged man, pause and activity. All right, you guys, what I'm getting here is that you're very, very thirsty and you want to uh, create movement in a situation because something might be on hold or there might just be a pause in activity with a person or a situation. So you're really looking to drink from something and to get something. You're thirsty for uh, an answer. So what I'm getting here, you guys, is once you do this ritual or whatever this is that you're doing, um, take the answer that you get or take the energy that comes to you. Don't try to push it. Don't try to, to continue to push for more and drain more and more from this person or situation. Because sometimes when we have a reading done, right, this is just an example. Somebody gets a reading done and they want to know what's going on in the situation and the reading comes back and it's, you know, not the, not what we were really looking for. We were really looking for, we're going to live happily ever after with this person and the readers, you know, it comes up the cards that it's just not necessarily looking that way at this time, or maybe this person just isn't ready, or maybe this person doesn't really feel the same at this time or whatever the situation might be. So we might go to another reader and then we might try to figure out from 10 readers to get until we get the reading or the outcome that we're looking for. What I'm getting here is really try to hold yourself back from doing that. Stick with one. You know, it doesn't, I mean, if you trust that something's off, then obviously you have to trust your intuition, but try not to push and push and push for the outcome that you're looking for. Whatever is revealed to you, take that as that's what's meant for you. That is the answer for you at this time when it comes to you and this person or the situation. Don't keep draining the life out of it to try to get a different outcome. Okay. It might even be if nothing happens either, that's your answer. Maybe it's just something that's not for you at this time or at all. Okay. But I feel like you guys, if you just keep yourselves open to the possibility of not, you know, taking a particular person and attaching your energy to them. And if you just want love in your life, just be very general, you know, just you're searching for a partner that you, you, you want to enjoy life with somebody that wants to grow old with you and have 10 of cups with you. But if you attach a particular person to that, that's when things get tricky. So yeah, anyways, so let's go ahead now and we're going to move into the cauldrons energy, which is something new that you could be creating this month as well. Connect with Gaia, ground yourself, go outside, be rooted in mother earth. Okay. Five of swords. So what I'm getting here from this, you guys, is that the five of swords is a tricky energy. Five of swords means feels defeated. So make sure that you're grounded with your expectations. Make sure you're grounded with what you're, what you're doing. Um, really try to come from the aspect of the highest good for all involved. Really try not to manipulate people and try to, you know, push your agenda. Um, this could also be you just kind of pulling yourselves away from other people that are trying to engage you or take something from you. And you just kind of spending time on your own and disconnecting from anyone that is trying to hurt you or play games with you. So it could be either way. So what you're creating is you're creating a more grounded, um, you're creating a more grounded energy within yourself. And when you're more grounded and you create magic or manifest manifest in that energy, the results are going to just be that much more practical and down to earth because sometimes people have unrealistic expectations when working with spells and magic and all that other stuff. And so we need to take some time to connect with ourselves through meditation, connect with our ancestors, our guides to kind of figure out what we're even wanting or what we're even searching for. Is that even really what is best for us or if that's our expectations are they just through the roof so we need to get grounded first before we do any kind of magical working that's just what I'm getting here so that's what you guys are going to be working on is getting more grounded and pulling out of any kind of like crazy energy that's not even realistic okay um let's now go into messages from your ancestors so messages from your ancestors the bones Oh my God, you guys, look, your ancestors are even see, saying it too. Don't be unrealistic. Okay. Something might not be as it seems. Don't get caught up in your, uh, don't get caught up in a delusion. Don't delude yourself. That's why it's very, very important for you to ground yourself this month. Okay. Don't get carried away. 
Yeah, two of wands is about a decision. You know, we're walking a real tight rope here. So we need to, so your ancestors are basically telling you, come back down to earth, connect with Gaia, get rooted, get grounded before you basically do anything or create anything or try to manifest because they don't want you to kind of get yourself into more of a state of delusion or even get lost in something, okay? So let's take a look and see the mummy. What energy is clinging to you right now? Well, I like that, the black cat. So your luck is going to change real soon with something. The magician. Okay, interesting. Be careful. Sometimes I see black cats as lucky, but I'm also getting this message. The magician is creating something, casting spells, doing something, doing some sort of ritual, or having someone else do something on their behalf. Make sure that it's coming from a place for everyone's highest good. Okay? Because if you don't, you're going to create some sort of misfortune for yourself. That's what I'm getting here. I don't know why that's coming up, but it is. So it's kind of like karma, you know, like whatever you put out, it's going to come back to you. You know, let's just say threefold. And not everybody believes that, but I feel like for some of you guys, that could be significant. Let's take a look at, at the devil's energy shadow, shadows that we might be working on that are still holding us back in some sense. Quarrelsome. Does this action fulfill an emotional need for you? Does it make you feel powerful? Is it a bad habit that needs to stop? Oh my God. Do, does what we even want, is it really the best for us? It's almost like we are asking ourselves and really facing that. Do what, does what I want to create, is it really like worth my time and energy? Is it really even the best thing for me? Or do I just feel entangled in this like i just ate a sword stuck i feel like i just can't i need to get control over this situation so i'm getting here you guys just get really really grounded spend more time being grounded and if you are going to do some kind of ritual or, or manifest in some sort of way do it in a very subtle way try not to attach it to a specific person you may just need to get it a little bit more um realistic or grounded with your um expectations of what you want to happen or what or what goes down or just be very open with that manifestation because I'm getting here. It could create more of a quarrel, kind of like what you're wanting, what you're trying to create by, by I'm, I'm, um, enchanting you to, to love me. I, I I'm doing this. This is just an example. You guys, I'm doing this spell because I want you to, to love me. Sometimes that can backfire and I'm getting here. You definitely don't want to get entangled in the wrong kind of magic. So, and some of this might not even be resonating for for Scorpios out there. Some of you guys might just be like, I'm not doing any spell. This reading just may not be for you this time. It's okay. All right. So why don't we take a look at the black cat, which is good luck and fortune. Happiness in our hearts and homes. So we're going to be blessed this month with our home, perhaps with our family, our friends, celebrations around the fire. And we have uh, the death card. Okay. So we're going to be blessed by maybe letting go Scorpio. That's also your energy death. So you're going to be letting go of certain things, maybe even focusing on rebirthing yourself in some sort of way. Maybe some of you guys are even leaving home or moving. Cause I did get a lot of that like divination or trying to figure out, should you move or should you travel? So I'm seeing here that there's a lot of blessings surrounding endings and also new beginnings and also just your home and the people in your home are very blessed this month. So that's a really nice thing. So let's now take a look and get the final messages, which are the predictions. So crystal ball, what is the prediction for fall autumn? Well, we have prosperity lies ahead, which is amazing. with the king of cups. So something lies ahead in the form. Okay. We have two. Okay. This is the deal. This is why it's very important. You guys, if you do, if you're looking for love or you're looking for a partner, don't attach to someone specific. There are multiple people that could be good suitors. So there's a king of cups and there's also a king of wands. One or the other could be for you. So if you're just like, oh my gosh, this king of cups is the only one that I want. In a way, you're kind of blocking the opportunity for this other person that might be better suited for you for coming in. So make sure that you don't get in the way of your own prosperity. Don't get in the way of what could, what else could be available to you. 
So I hope that makes sense to you guys. So whatever you're trying to manifest in the form of romance or love, just be very open. Don't be closed minded. Don't be unrealistic. And really just try to be grounded with what you're trying to create. But regardless, what I'm getting here is there is a suitor. If you're looking for one on the horizon. Okay. And that King of cups is Scorpio. That's you. And I feel like you will manifest the correct partner for you. That King of wands, which could be a Leo as well. Okay. All right, you guys, I hope that that resonated. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.